Hi guys. So I wanted to talk about a person I knew briefly when I was younger. Uh, it might not actually be the strangest friend I've ever had because I've had some pretty strange friends over the years. But um, I think putting, you know, in the top three strangest friends I've ever had is not as uh, grabbing of a title. So we'll just say it's the strangest friend I've ever had. Um, it was certainly a strange situation. Um so when I was younger, uh, me and my friends used to smoke weed on Dartmoor and it was a great place to hang out growing up. It was a great place to smoke weed and to just, just like hang out and just sort of be silly or whatever. Like we were kind of, um, quite, uh, immature and in a, in a good way, you know, quite like free spirited and, and enjoyed just like having a laugh and, uh, messing around basically and and uh being on the moors and smoking weed uh, particularly <laughs> that and uh yeah to begin with when we when we first started smoking weed it was very um innocent and fun and it wasn't so much about the weed it was i mean we were kind of like obsessed with weed but in a way that was a bit childish like we you know we'd watched a lot of like sort of movies about it and were a bit uh, I was definitely like a bit enamored with weed culture but not not real weed culture not the weed culture that actually sort of um really permeates into people's lives and into society over time when they smoke but the kind of um the kind of uh more like upbeat kind of weed culture you consume from like American movies and in like well I wouldn't say the early days of the internet but the internet of that era you know it was quite a different place the world in general was was um oh man like remarkably different honestly like remarkably different uh it's crazy it's crazy to imagine how different it was uh it was when I think back, I I don't know, man. Like I know I know how this sounds, but I really feel bad for people who don't get to experience the world in that way now. Like young people, I uh, I know that there's just like I know that people would have said that about my generation as well. But um, and that was probably true. But I f I feel bad for like teenagers now and I know the phones thing is a very um sort of uh obvious topic and sort of cliche thing to talk about but but I didn't I didn't have a phone that could even go on the internet until years after all of this um and I, one sec. Sorry, I, I had to check something. Um, yeah, so it was it was a very different time, basically. Uh, we still spent a lot of time on the internet. Like, at home, I was on the internet all the time, and it was pretty bad. You know, I was looking at porn constantly and stuff, and we played computer games a lot. But we hung out a lot, and we hung out in a way where there wasn't anything else to do while you were hanging out if you were outdoors, you know? And I guess that's the same for people. You know, when you're out and about, like, not everyone, not even all young people are, like, you know, on their phones and stuff, but... But you don't see them out and about as much. And, you know, I just wonder, like, would it have been different? It would have been different, you know, like us hanging out. It would have been different. Uh, and even now, I'm an adult and I find it, like, I find it hard to be, to feel normal. I find it hard to be normal. I find it hard to, to be inside my own brain sometimes because I'm just so bored and so impatient and so uh like sort of just bored and impatient really i guess and it leads to a kind of anxiety um but yeah we didn't really have that it was it was easier to be amused it was easier to have a laugh and some of that is age and some of that is is the era that we were in compared to the era that we're in now but it felt easier to to laugh about stuff and to just find fun in like stupid things, you know, or like simple things. Um, yeah. So anyway, we, we used to hang out there a lot and we used to smoke 
weed up there and, and whatever. And it was really good. But we became more and more obsessed with the idea of smoking weed indoors. Like we really wanted to smoke in a house because when we would smoke out there, we, we didn't realize, you know, it happens a lot in life. I, I have it now, you know, because sometimes I really want like, I work on a lot of different creative ventures and like I don't make any money from any of them and I always want to and I'm always like I really want this to be like my job but in the back of my mind there's often a voice that's like you will miss this time you will you will really miss this time when it's not your job and when you don't make any money from it and when you have a kind of weird level of freedom and sometimes the things that seem like limitations in life are not really limitations so I think for example we would be out there smoking and like we didn't have we needed to use the phone screen our phone screens as like a lot of the phones they didn't, didn't even have torches you know some of them did but you'd have to use your phone light and we'd like be rolling and our hands would be really cold and we wouldn't we'd only have like one drink between all of us or something sometimes we wouldn't even have a drink we wouldn't have any like food there's nowhere comfy to sit and we thought all of these were bad things um but they weren't they were good things they were part of what made the experience really fun and part of what made it, uh, <clears throat> part of what made it like, gave things a feeling of sort of, um, I don't know, like adventure and spontaneity and just, just being, just being outdoors, you know, and being not, I don't know. Again, some of that is, it's hard to, it's hard to separate what parts were just age and what parts were, were circumstantial. Um, but it was, it was really good. I remember the the sort of outdoor smoking era very fondly. There wasn't a lot of weirdness and it helped, I guess, that we hadn't gotten into like hard drugs and stuff by that point. But yeah, it was a good time. Um, and we became more and more fixated on, on smoking indoors instead of thinking like, wow, we've got this perfect thing going, you know, we have so much fun and this is great and probably we won't have this kind of fun that easily when we're older and we'll have a lot more responsibilities and stuff and things will be different instead of just enjoying it we kind of thought oh we need to like find a way to smoke indoors um and i thought i remember because what would happen sometimes is one of our one of our parents would go away one of you know one of us's parents would go away and we'd have a free house once in a while for like a weekend and we'd go to someone's house and smoke there. And usually we wouldn't smoke in the house. We might smoke just outside the door or something. But we could hang out and smoke and then go into the house and hang out in the house and watch TV. And it was really fun. It was like an event. And I remember like when someone had a free house, it'd be a, a, a really big event for our social group. And it would be amazing. Like most of the time, like there were, there were varying degrees of quality, but usually it would be something just really really fun for like two days that you'd remember as like an event it's like a, you know our equivalent of a holiday and uh we'd like you know watch stuff and joke around and and stuff and um it was really good uh so we thought well if we had a if one of us had a house or an apartment a flat it would be like this every day and obviously that's not true nobody lives like that no one has that much fun every day people might have fun every day but no one lives the way that you do when you're like 16 or 17 years old and you know your friend's parents have gone away and you're there for two days and you've all gone to like sleep there and you've brought weed with you and prepared and you know you're in like a fun mood you can't really maintain that it's not realistic to live like that every day and really at a certain point you don't even want to anyway uh, you just want to like do stuff, do other stuff, you know, and get things done and have more of a, maybe more of a balanced lifestyle, not least because you know that it's not possible anyway, but you know, you have like bills to pay and shit, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, so we, we thought, well, if we could just find, you know, there must just be somewhere, you know, and we try different things, different different ways of achieving this and different sort of uh, avenues, you know, like so-and-so's parents had like a second home. Maybe we can like break into that and that can become our house or something, you know, all sorts of different things. And then we started hearing about this guy. I'll say his name is Mikey. Um, 
it's not his real name, but we'll say Mikey. Uh, and uh, we heard about this guy. Someone we knew had gone there. I don't, I don't remember the exact details. I'll probably have some of this wrong. But someone we knew had gone to his house in the small town that we lived in. Someone had gone to his, his little flat and hung out there after a night out. And various people were just mentioning this guy, Mikey, who was like an older guy who had a flat in town. And not many people had them. It wasn't like... Um, some of them were given out by the council. Some people had council flats, but there was no, like, it wasn't like a council estate. Like, you know, most areas in bigger cities and towns, you'd have, like, council flat areas and stuff. But it wasn't like that, really, because it was a more of an affluent area. Not entirely, but most of it was. So it was like, there would just be sort of random smatterings, you know, this flat here, that flat there. So there, some of them were quite nice places. Anyway, this guy had a had a flat. And he was older. And people used to go there. And it was usually the people in the year above us, I think, that used to go there. But some people in our year went there. And we just began hearing about this person. And then uh, we really wanted to go there. And we thought, man, sounds amazing. You go there and you could smoke bongs indoors, which was like, you know, really exciting to us to like smoke a bong indoors. And we, that was another thing. We also got into into bongs, into like shotties, which are like, you know, I mentioned in previous videos, but they're like, it's like a form of like, highly addictive uh bottle bong packed with sorry one sec i don't know beg your pardon sorry for the interruptions um yeah so it's like a it's basically it's like it's like uh it's a weird way of smoking bongs where you put a lot of tobacco in and you like pull them through and stuff it's like it's very addictive it's like it's like to weed what crack is to cocaine i guess um and we'd gotten into this as well. And we, and we really wanted to smoke indoors. Like we just thought this for some reason, thought this would be like the best thing ever. I guess it, I guess it's, it's understandable that we thought that. Um, needless to say, you know, years later, after, after years of being able to smoke indoors and smoke weed whenever I wanted, as long as I could afford it, it w wasn't the sort of dream I thought it would be. It's not, it's not it's not exciting to like sit around with your mates like smoking bongs indoors all day from morning until night it's not it's not fun um and it's not sustainable and it's not it's just not <laughs> it's not like a never-ending like party you know like when you're a teenager like it just isn't like that uh so so anyway we started thinking how can we go to this guy's house and to his flat and smoke weed and um i think what happened and i don't remember the details exactly but i think what happened was me and another friend uh we we just thought if we just hang out there like we just hang out outside we can be accepted into it um and we we tried this i think we thought like we'll just hang outside and then when someone comes outside for a smoke which is dumb when you think about it because obviously they weren't coming outside for a smoke they were smoking indoors which is why we wanted to go there but we thought someone else will come for someone will come outside for a smoke and we'll be like oh have you got a lighter like can we borrow your lighter and then we'll start chatting to them and then they'll invite us in we used to come up with these schemes a lot like that never worked but we thought like yeah man we'll just like talk our way into this situation never did it once i mean this guy maybe did sometimes like he probably, he was probably more likely to be able to get away with that than i was but we always thought like yeah we'll just we'll just do it we'll just socially maneuver the you know situation and uh i don't think that worked and then someone else we knew went there on a, on a night out and i think did did a line of mephadrone and that was another thing that became like a source of intrigue uh something i i don't remember the chronology of all of it but in the end we ended up being invited in with someone we knew or something and we, we were able to go there and and hang out and we met this guy mikey and he had a lot of friends around who were like um he was older and most of his friends were older you know they weren't all his age but they were like older than us some of them were people that we used to buy weed from and they used to like just sort of rip us off <laughs> they were they were people like a year or two older than us and they used to just sell us like the worst bags ever and thought we were absolute mugs and uh they were which we were um 
and they they would hang out there and then there were people like his age kind of i don't know if he was probably the oldest one to be honest but there were people like closer to his age and they were a bit more like serious and and him this guy mikey and mikey was a um he was uh he'd come from a a traveler family a roma gypsy traveler family and he'd been taken into care when he was very young because he had been from what i remember quite badly abused as a very young child or baby so he'd grown up in care and so he didn't have any connections from what i could tell to anybody um he was just kind of apart from his friends you know that he would like smoke with and stuff and he wasn't from this town he hadn't even grown up in this town originally so anyway uh we started hanging out there and it became immediately this kind of um you know we tried to sort of fit in there and we were trying to like enjoy it but there was always a feeling we had often in these kinds of situations where there were these more kind of serious guys who were like a bit older and a bit more like trying to sort of be hard and trying to be cool all the time and we weren't hard or cool and also we weren't really interested in being that and we were more just like you know, we would try and like sort of fit in, but we weren't really like, we didn't really want to be like that. We didn't really like people like that. We found it kind of annoying and tedious to be around. We were also a bit like intimidated, you know, by these kinds of people. And we just wanted to like have fun and smoke weed. And Mikey really liked us, basically. He really liked our like kind of uh, childlike energy. Childlike is maybe the wrong word, but you know, fun kind of like silly energy, I guess would be the right word. Uh, he really liked that and he really enjoyed being around us and he enjoyed being around these other guys as well but um, you could see immediately he kind of connected with with our our way of you know hanging out and and all of this and um, what would happen with people would come and go people would come and go and like he would he would always be there he was the one person who was always there and his door was always open to everyone and you know to everyone that he knew people would just turn up and be like oh i'm coming around for a smoke or whatever and people would use his place obviously in hindsight like they were just using him to just come and sit there and then they would go off and like fucking sell some weed to someone and come back and sit there and uh and yeah he was quite a, he had a friendly demeanor he was quite amusing um he seemed a bit like a bit sort of like gormless sometimes uh he was quite a good looking guy he was like pretty tall he had just quite a likable charismatic energy you know he sort of liked him but it was something a, a little bit strange about him um uh, and he did he had this kind of odd gormless vibe you know where you couldn't tell how much of it was a joke or not and how much he was like like being silly and how much was like he didn't really understand what was going on around him and he he had a fun friendly energy but you did feel like sometimes there was this trace of like seriousness underneath it where you know he would do it he would react to something and you were sort of like mm, is this you know, i think he's joking or i think he's he's laughing here but you you know it was, it was something a bit a tiny tiny hint of feeling a little bit uneasy around him but generally like he was very likable um and friendly and uh and so these people would come and go and then sometimes what would happen is it would just be us there uh like me and my friends and him or some combination of us you know there was there was two of us who were there a lot or three of us who were there quite a lot and then the other two didn't live locally so they weren't there as often um but there would just be some combination of us there and his friends would leave and then the atmosphere would change and it would become a lot more like sort of like fun and silly and stuff and we would start like telling him about weird shit and you know like telling him about weird stuff we were into and you know all dumb like stoner talk and stuff that we were into and uh sort of like blowing his mind with all of this stuff and like for example like i one thing i remember specifically was that he didn't know anything about space like he knew nothing about space so we were just saying telling him very basic facts about space and he couldn't believe it he thought we were like making fun of him he thought we were making it up and he was he just like he just didn't know any of you know and he was like nah nah you boys are having me on you boys are taking the piss out of me this is a joke and like there's again an example of something where like you couldn't tell was he fully serious was he almost like angry about these you know space facts we were giving him and stuff it was just it was just like a kind of it was an unusual situation and yeah he was probably at that time 
it's hard to say. He was, I guess, probably about, um, probably about somewhere between 24 and 30. I, I don't remember. And he didn't have a job or anything. And he used to say a lot, like, that he was getting ready to join the army. He kept talking about how he was going to join the army. But you just sort of got the feeling that he'd been talking about this for years and not doing it. And he had this poster, and it was like an army workout poster. It had, like, <laughs> it was like a big, a big like, you know, one of those large bedroom wall posters. And it had some stupid, like, army workout thing. Like, you know, nowadays you just, like, go on fucking TikTok and see some workout or something. But... It, it was like, I guess, a slightly simpler time where you might actually buy a poster that had workouts on it. And it was just like, you know, 100 push-ups, uh, 100 squats, do this, increase it by 10 every day or whatever. And it had like some guy in like army uniform doing all these workouts on the poster. And he was like, yeah, I've been, you know, I've just, I've, I did that yesterday. I'm knackered. I've been doing it every day. I'm going to do it and then get ready for the army or whatever. And he kept talking about this. And, uh, and we were sort of like, why do you want to join the army? You know, and sort of questioning it because that wasn't really like the kind of thing you know we just thought that's like a strange thing to do you know to join the army actually but like probably would have been a, a reasonable life choice for him um but yeah anyway he uh we would hang out with him and it'd be fun and he he was clearly really enjoying it and i think it was a it, there was a um there was a part of a part of it that was uh, him being able to experience something he he kind of didn't really hadn't had an opportunity to experience or didn't really generally get the opportunity to experience and where there was no um, you know with us he, you didn't feel you had to uh, you had to you had to be a certain way or that you know we were trying to get one over on you or that we were going to like do something or you had to have your guard up or you had to be intimidating or you had, it wasn't anything like that it was just like we just wanted to have fun we were just hanging out we were just nice people and it, some of that changed a little bit like in the f sort of following year or two when we got more into like drugs and stuff um unfortunately it became more of a paranoid serious kind of atmosphere but at that time yeah it was just like you know um you didn't need to feel we, we were easy people to hang out with, I guess, as long as you weren't sort of uptight and try obsessed with like being cool and whatever. So he he was clearly really enjoying our company. There was one one fellow we hung out with who he didn't really like. He kept saying he smelled, and he he was like, "Yeah, I don't want him around. He smells," which was a bit out of order because also this person didn't smell. Like he was just a bit scruffy, but he didn't smell, and he was like, "Yeah, don't bring him here." And that was a bit a, an example of sometimes his his behaviour would be a bit like socially inappropriate, you know, like it was just clearly not very nice to say that. And he didn't really make an effort to like this person or get to know him. He was just like, nah, he smells like I don't want him around. And he didn't. It was just it was just odd. Uh, and um, so it was a bit childish, you know, to like refuse to have this guy around. But he did in the end. I think we just insisted and we were like, no, nah, he's cool. Like, you know. And he was like, okay, whatever. I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... He grew to really like having us around. And then he didn't really always like having these other people around. And, and we would get uncomfortable. Some of them were dickheads. Like, I remember there was one of them. He was just, he was just always trying to be hard and always trying to like... You know, and it's like when you're like... 16 or something and there's some fucking like 25 year old guy like trying to impress you telling you about like what he would do if someone did this or like what he says when the police do this and it's like fucking shut up man like just have a laugh and hang out but it, he was one of those people there were quite a few of those people there and I remember he was uh well he I wasn't there when he did it but he was telling them some ridiculous story telling my friends some ridiculous not story, but this idea, this like, he was saying like, when the police have, um, I thought this was so weird. He, he said that when the police have, uh, you know, they have the helicopters that can, that with the with the heat seeking stuff, so they can see you if you run into the woods. And he said that he keeps towels in the freezer. And he said when the police come to do a raid, he has like a bath full of ice or something. He has ice, he keeps ice cubes in the freezer. He's going to fill the bath with cold water and ice, get in there to bring his body temperature down and then put the towels around himself 
and then run away out the window and then go to the woods and they won't find him because he's got the cold towels on himself and he's been in the bath full of ice, which is like one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. And even if you're going to do that incredibly dumb idea, which isn't going to work, why don't you put cloves in the freezer? Like why, why are you running around like you've just got out of the shower with towels around you? Just put some cloves in the freezer, put a pair of overalls in there. It's not going to work anyway, but just do that if you're intent on, you know, following this stupid plan. Anyway, and he would just say stupid shit like that. Um, <clears throat> and like, yeah, you'd just be like, oh, right, nice, yeah, nice one, mate. Cool, cool. And just sort of nod along and try to get through the conversation. And there was becoming like this weird sort of, yeah, kind of odd divide, you know, where like we would go there to hang out with Mikey and then Mikey's friends would often be there. And as soon as one of them would turn up, you know, just become like a serious atmosphere or a more like, you know, just like, yeah, like whatever, sort of pretentious, like tough guy atmosphere. And we would just sort of sit there like silently, not really enjoying it. It was really boring. And, uh, and so he he we didn't really like it and he didn't really seem to like this weird sort of you know divide or moreover he didn't really seem to like the um the atmosphere that some of his friends brought around to the place and he became very uh enamored with us and wanted us to be there all the time and wanted us to hang out with him all the time you know and <clears throat> then one day we were there and there was this couple and one of them was a guy who used to sell us weed and they were all right like I like well they, he used to rip us off um a couple of times he just took our money and like didn't give us any weed which is crazy and we still continue to buy off him for years it's a small town you know we didn't have a lot of options but um i think he was an all right guy you know but i think him and his girlfriend were a bit um like troubled i think they were having problems and you know a lot of weed and booze and maybe other stuff and it was a bit of a it was a bit it was a bit of a tense situation sometimes and uh and um they were there and and like they were hanging out and people were chatting or whatever and she was drinking some like wine or some rosé or something and she said something to him this girl to her boyfriend she said something to him i don't remember what it was and he just made some... He didn't even say anything that bad. He just made some kind of flippant remark, like, like, yeah, well, you would fucking say that, wouldn't you, or whatever, because you're a dickhead or something. You know, something like... It, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, like, really insulting. He wasn't He wasn't being, like, really nasty to her or anything. She was just kind of, like, you know, like, sort of yapping at him, and they were having some kind of thing, and he just said something, like, sarcastic, kind of under his breath in front of us to her we were at this point we were on sofas around a coffee table and then suddenly out of nowhere it was really weird she like very quickly just launched herself out of this chair and grabbed the the rosé bowl and fully like full power went to just smash it over his head so it, like she was gonna just fully smash this bottle over his head and he jumped up immediately out of his chair as she got up they both like on opposite sides of the coffee table jumped up out of their chairs and she grabbed the bottle and as she went to hit him with it he grabbed her like quite impressively to be honest i remember him like grabbing her arm in a sort of ninja like fashion he grabbed her arm and then he sort of grabbed her and was you know just like wrapped around her and she was like really struggling to get out and he was having to like you know restrain her and it was this really like intense struggle and they were like you know like it was like you know sort of like they were like you know things were falling over and stuff and it was it was like kind of frantic and we were all just sat in our chairs like oh god <laughs> like really stoned and uncomfortable as we often were when these situations would happen there you know we were, that was the thing was we'd be like really high and not wanting to deal with this kind of stuff you know and be like paranoid and then uh he she was like it sort of the, the the little scuffle kind of ended and he just like threw her down and uh you know he just did his best to try and like restrain her and stop the situation he, he, you know he didn't he didn't um he uh he was it was he was just like defending himself you know and he threw her down on the uh sofa or whatever and then she was like screaming and crying she was immediately very emotional about the situation and and she like just like ran off or something outside and then they went outside and started having a mental argument right outside the front door 
of the flat and it wasn't it wasn't a block of flats so this just went out into the street so they're out in the street in this sort of alleyway having a mental argument like super emotionally intense you know and we were all just sat around like twiddling our thumbs being like mm, pack another bong and you know like trying to just like sort of hang out and politely ignore it and then while they were having this argument the guy the boyfriend went mad and uh started punching one of the mailboxes on the wall and he punched the mailbox so much that I think he like badly broke his hand and a lot of the fingers were like out of place and stuff and the mailbox was all dented and completely like smashed in and um he had uh, yeah he'd like badly damaged the mailbox and 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 had to I think presumably had to go to hospital for his hand and Mikey came back in and was like annoyed you know he was like that was crazy wasn't it and we were like yeah man and he was like he was he was really annoyed and he sort of like closed up for the night you know and we were in there and and he was like this is like ridiculous you know people coming here and doing stuff like this we're trying to chill out and have a nice time and he kept referring to us by this stage he began referring to us as the boys and he was like I'm trying to chill with the boys you know I'm trying to have a nice time with the boys trying to have a nice evening and people keep turning up and doing stuff like this and and we were like yeah man it's crazy you know we didn't want to say anything rude though because we knew this other guy and and they were friends and we didn't want to like be like yeah that was fucking ridiculous you know like what a dick or whatever you know and and uh and also it was just quite an intense situation so we sort of felt a bit like kind of felt bad for them but also it was a bit like fucking hell you know it was chilling having a smoke like it's not really very nice to be around um and and so uh we were sort of kind of biting our tongues we had done generally when these things had happened there or just in general about the whole situation we'd never really said anything because we were like we were just basically scared of everyone like we didn't want to like you know someone to find out we said something he would tell them and then they would like try and like fucking beat us up or something you know so we were just like keeping our mouths shut about everything and uh and then he just kept going on about it and we were like yeah and then eventually the more he was talking about it, he was complaining about it a lot he was really annoyed at what had happened and he kept being like yeah i'm trying to you know have a chill evening with the boys and we we then started to be like we were like yeah you know it's kind of sometimes a bit weird here and we started to sort of slowly kind of you know express how we were feeling about it a little bit and we were like yeah you know like nothing against these people but sometimes there's a bit of a, a bad vibe and you know we when when it's just us lot we're just having fun and it's always fun and then there's other people who come and it's not really very fun and it's like very serious and stuff like this happens and it's just not really you know we kind of we're more like we just prefer to just chill out and have fun and he was like yeah yeah and he was like really taking it in and thinking about it and you could see him he was like yeah 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 and he was really like really consuming this information you know and and then he was like hmm and you could see he was kind of planning what to do and then uh later that night one of his other friends came by someone who'd been there you know quite regularly from the beginning when we'd been hanging out and he came he came there he knocked on the door and Mikey was like no you can't come in he opened the door and like put his head through the door and he was like no no, no you can't come in and he was like why not and, you know because they were friends and he was like I'm just trying to have a quiet one with the boys like I don't want all this you know I've had so and so here and he smashed up the mailbox and you know, I'm just having a quiet one with the boys and he the guy was like well I didn't do it you know which was fair enough but he didn't and like we didn't really like this guy but he hadn't done anything that we were aware of um and he was like no 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 I'm just having a quiet one with the boys so you gotta go and then he like pulled the blinds down on the front door and dimmed the lights so it didn't look like anyone was in and just closed the door and we just hung out for the night and smoked there and tried to have fun it was a bit of a weird atmosphere and then uh we thought maybe that was just for that night you know and then he began refusing to allow anyone else to come around apart from us and we would go there and people would turn up it's, would ha- it's happened quite a few times when people turned up and he was like no i'm just here with the boys and we don't want you here <laughs> 
<laughs> and we were like, whoa, we didn't say that. Because you know, we knew all of these people. Like some of them had gone to our school. They'd left school since most of them. But like there was one person actually who was in our year who we were sort of friends with, or at least we knew. And, you know, he was like denied entry. And a few, quite actually, there were a few people when I think about it. Like they, we didn't really tend to be there at the same time as them. But, um, but uh, yeah, some girls from our year <laughs> were there, uh, which was a bit, you know, in hindsight, I guess a bit, a bit strange. Um, um, but as in, you know, like just with him. Um, and, uh, well, I remember one girl was, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, so he, he would, uh, he would just like start refusing people entry to his place and we were always kind of like in a way we were you know we didn't really want those people there but it was becoming very awkward because he kept sort of saying we don't want you here and it made it seem like we had sort of commandeered his flat and that we were like you know like we we had insisted on no one else being around and I remember sometimes like a few times when it happened like people poking their head through the door and looking at us and we were all just sat in the living room like it was a studio flat really but we were sort of sat you know in in, well in the living room part of it and just trying to act normal and like sort of just like looking the other way and trying to chat with each other and it was getting really awkward and during this period like where it would just be us and him we started to find out more about him and he for example he decided like probably because I wore glasses he just (laughs) He decided I was like, I was uh, very smart and he wanted me to write uh, his autobiography, his biography, not his autobiography. He wanted me to write his biography. And I was like, okay, you know, because I didn't really know how to say no at that age. I didn't, uh, or at least I didn't know how to say that depends, you know, depends really on how this is going to work and, and how how everything will go down you know i'm not just gonna write it you know um so i agreed and he's telling me that he wanted me to to write a biography based on his experiences growing up in care and his his uh his life you know and he said he had all this paperwork from when he was in care. He had all this uh, stuff from social services and all of these, like, documents and letters and stuff about him. And he said, we can go through it. And he said, you come round, just you, on, like, Thursday or something, come round and we'll just look through it all together and don't bring any of the other boys And I was like, okay. And, you know, agreed to it. I was thinking this is a bit weird. You never know. Maybe this will be good. I was just sort of kind of like pleased to have been asked. But also, yeah, I just didn't really, I didn't really know how to sort of say no or question the process. So I went around and he gave me this box of all these documents. And and it was a huge, a huge box full of paperwork about him. And... I don't think he could read very well or write very well. Um, but he could, you know, he could read because he was reading some of the documents. Um, but he, like, not super well, you know. And he um, <clears throat> he sh- was showing me them and it was stuff like um, Mikey is completely unresponsive in class and refuses to speak and is, you know, aggressive with his teachers whenever they try to, like, communicate with him and he just refuses to participate in anything. And it it was all, it sounded very serious, like, not normal, not, like, you know, slightly normal sort of misbehaviour. It sounded like someone who was, like, very, very unhappy and very dysfunctional and very uncomfortable in the environment that he was in. And then there was one about how he tried to burn down the school. Um, and a lot of stuff like this, a lot of incidents of violence or burning, trying to burn down the school or just outright sort of refusal to communicate or participate. And it was quite intense to read it and quite sad. And um, from what I could gather, he didn't have any 
a- anything basically you know like he grew up in care and he didn't have any and en- really anything you know like he didn't have anything to to hold on to in life and um it's uh you know he was still quite a friendly guy he was still like nice to be around and he was still he seemed like someone who there was nothing wrong with him uh, genetically there was nothing wrong with him like inherently you know that's what i mean like he 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 um he was enjoyable to be around you could chat to him he was seemed nice uh he was a charismatic person he had you know something going on in his brain like he wasn't um he wasn't like boring uh and all things considered he was pretty nice like considering you know the the sort of upbringing he appeared to have had and how he appeared to have been when he was younger like he was nice enough to be around um and uh yeah so anyway we were looking through this stuff and I was like okay and then reading through it all and it was every every page I looked at there was something like this in it you know and it was it was kind of like sad and he I I don't know how much he really wanted to write the book he just wanted me to see it he just wanted to like show someone this stuff and he seemed quite invested in my reaction to it you know he was like showing me these things and he seemed sort of uh to to uh just to he wanted to see me seeing this paperwork he wanted to see me seeing him kind of and i looked through it and was like okay and then we sort of talked about it a bit and how it would work and then the idea just kind of petered out really like it never happened i think that was more or less the last of it and then uh yeah we would continue to have this weird situation and it became a thing where people even that were in our year at school i remember a guy was like was like what's all this about you know we used to go there and we he won't let us go around there anymore and he's like stopping everyone from going there and we were like we didn't really ask him to do it to be honest um it's just kind of happened and people were pissed off with us a lot of these people felt it was our fault and were very unhappy and felt like we had ruined this guy's flat and the whole you know sort of hangout situation there um and uh and then the more that it was just us and him the more i guess would would become a bit weird sometimes being there and you started to feel like it wasn't going anywhere because we kind of had our lives ahead of us and Um, it didn't feel like he did in the same way and it felt like it felt like time had stopped in his flat and it was like okay what's next you know we're all hanging out here but what's next where's this going to go and and it led to a, a kind of weird atmosphere I think that was a bit of a feeling of like you know like our circumstances are very different from one another you know and and um i don't know i don't know exactly there was there was a lot of reasons but it was sort of like it was there was a feeling of like what now you know now that everyone else is banned we're all just going to sit here like we're not really gonna we're not living life in the same way we have very different lives we were still we hadn't we hadn't even left sixth form yet and uh which is like you know school basically if you're american um it's like the last you know year or two of school we hadn't even left that yet and uh he was way older than us and you know we had like families and stuff and it was just it was just a very we, we were very different our circumstances were very different and i remember one time me and the guy who he said smelled who he didn't who he didn't want there um i think by this stage he just accepted him or whatever but we were there and he was telling a story i remember we were really stoned i remember like you know because especially then we would buy weed and like we didn't have any control over what weed we would buy so sometimes you buy weed and it was nice and you just get like a nice buzz and then sometimes you buy weed and you'd be really fucking high and uncomfortably so and we were we were smoking and already getting very 
anxious and paranoid and very high. I remember being like really, really high. And we were sat, there was like a kitchen sort of island table. And he was, Mikey was down this end and me and my friend, the guy who he didn't really like being there at first, we were sat opposite each other on like stools at the kitchen island table. And it was a kind of weird seating arrangement, you know, and we were sort of like, you know, not, not very, it wasn't a very relaxed atmosphere. And he was telling some story and uh, it was about how he he had got he had some situation with a guy and these two women on a night out or something he's out in the city or something and he'd had some sort of situation with them and he's telling the story and the story was it sounded like it was about you know the guy was doing something to him the guy was him and the guy were going to fight or something it was just like one of these kind of stories of like getting into a fight and then I remember like zoning out and not really paying attention. Uh, maybe he was telling someone else the story. I don't remember, but it was a long time ago. Like, you know, literally more than, it was about 15 years ago this all happened. But he was telling this story. And then and then I remember sort of zoning out. And I feel like we both were. And then he said something about, then he was like, yeah, then I, then I, then I grabbed the woman by the back of the he grabbed her by her hair and he was explaining this you know that he's like yeah and then i grabbed her by the back of her hair and i and i smashed her face through the glass and then i and then i knocked the other woman out or something and like qu- quite shocking you know to hear someone say this especially f- from our like very sheltered background and we were kind of like looking at each other like sort of looking up at each other like oh and both kind of not knowing how to react and just sort of like hmm and really high and quite quite shocked by this information I guess that he'd like put a woman's face through a window and like beaten up another woman or something it was quite shocking uh and yeah we just kind of hung out for a bit and then left and we were kind of uncomfortable like oh that was that was a pretty weird story that he told and we didn't really know how to react to it and then there was a situation we then found out about that had happened prior to all of this, from what I remember, prior to us knowing him. There was a girl in the year above us who um, was, from what I, I, I didn't know anything about this person, but from what I knew, like a normal, nice girl from like a kind of normal, nice family, um, for some reason ended up in a relationship with Mikey. And apparently someone told us that um, at some stage, and bear in mind this girl was a, a lot younger, you know, she was in, she was the year above or maybe two two years above us, something like that. Um, maybe three, but I think two years above, yeah. Uh, he had at some point had beaten her up so badly that she'd been hospitalised and uh and people were like yeah you know you shouldn't hang out with mikey mikey's a piece of shit and uh they wouldn't tell us i remember i remember now yeah they wouldn't tell us for a while it was my friend's brother was like i'm not going to talk about it but you shouldn't hang out with that guy he's a piece of shit and we were like we like him he seems cool or whatever and then eventually he told us and said no he you know he he beat this girl up so badly and uh and again yeah it was quite it was quite shocking to hear and especially i mean it was it was it was very odd because she wasn't the kind of person you'd imagine being in a situation like that. And so we started to get a bit uncomfortable and we started to not want to hang out with him. It was the, I guess, hearing these stories and then also the increasingly weird social situation. But we felt like it was quite hard to not, you know, and he'd be like, so you come around tomorrow and we'd be like, uh maybe yeah you know we've got a lot of work on and stuff we've got a lot of exams which was funny like because we didn't literally didn't spend any time i don't remember studying i literally don't remember studying like ever like we just one of my friends i think had a less than 20 percent attendance rate in sixth form and mine was not much better i mean his was ridiculously bad i think he had like 18 percent attendance for his classes or something it was crazy we were just absolute like, I mean, we, di- we didn't, yeah, didn't study, didn't go to school. 
ever but i think we started using exams as an excuse which was kind of funny like yeah we've got our fucking a levels coming up we've got to get ready and uh and then we started trying to hang out there less and then when he would see us he'd be like why don't you guys come around anymore what's going on you know I want to hang out with the boys. Like, what's going on? And it was like, he really didn't want to, you know, like kind of let go of this like fun environment that there had been at one stage between us. And we were like, yeah, sorry, man. I'm just a bit, you know, busier. And he was like, what's, what's going on? What's happening here? You know, why don't, why don't you want to come around? I want to hang out with the boys and stuff. And he was just, he just had this kind of, um, what felt like sort of childlike naivety about it. You know, that was a bit, it was, it was a bit difficult to, to, it was just a bit uncomfortable, you know, you sort of you felt like a bit harsh, to be honest, like for us to not, you know, hang out with him in spite of, you know, the odd things that had begun happening and that we'd heard. Um, and uh, it did feel like uh, there was just like a kind of um, a childlike quality to a lot of it. And I know that's kind of incongruent with like putting a woman's face through a window and stuff. I understand that, but it did feel like there was a part of him that just uh, hadn't had the necessary environment to like just grow up. And, you know, it was, it was uh, clearly not a normal upbringing whatsoever. Um, and it takes quite a lot to be taken into care at such a young age. Like, I mean, really bad stuff, you know, it really is like, uh, they're not that, that eager to take people into care. A lot of people get, I, I know it varies from case to case and region to region and everything but like people go through a lot of stuff before they get put into care so to get put into care at such a young age when you're like you know pre-verbal is uh is kind of crazy to be honest um and uh and then yeah so we then just started trying to kind of hide from him and I, I wasn't there one time but one time he saw one of my friends walking back from school through the park and he was on the other side of the park like really far away and he shouted out to him and the guy like tried to just wave and ignore him and then he just like sprinted across the whole park and they said he got there and he was like panting he was knackered and he was like what's going on why don't you come around anymore you know and he was getting kind of like hostile about it like the fact that we weren't really coming around anymore and we were then just constantly trying to hide from him and uh, it became like a kind of an awkward situation. Um, and then uh, then we didn't really interact with him like beyond that much. And I think he started hanging out with some of his other mates again and kind of like made amends with them. And then the last we heard, he was moving to a completely different part of the country with one of his other mates. He was leaving the flat and just like moving somewhere it's quite random it's quite a random place to move to i don't think there was any particular reason to move there it was like a kind of odd random place i don't know if he was moved around deliberately by the council you know like it, having been in care and maybe come maybe had some sort of difficult ties to his past maybe they'd that's why he'd ended up in our town in the first place because again that was also quite a random place for him to have been in there was no nearby like travel or community or anything so i think maybe they'd put him far away and then if he ever maybe sometimes got himself into situations that maybe they moved him again i don't know uh maybe not but i mean i don't know where how he was getting a flat in this other town because he didn't he didn't have a job or anything and uh yeah then eventually we just kind of it just it just petered out and we stopped hanging out with him and that was it really um, but I found it, uh, it was all, it was uncomfortable. Um, but like, and, and the stuff we heard was obviously horrible. Um, but it was, um, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine how a person could even live growing up like that. You know, it's hard to imagine, like it's hard, it's hard just to have, a normal family it's hard life is hard it's hard to deal with relatives and friends and partners and stuff. It's, it's like really hard you know life is genuinely difficult i think for most people there's a lot of difficulties and hardship you face and even um even yeah in a normal family and of course in a in a in a dysfunctional family that has its problems it's really hard it's really hard to cope even if you you know 
you have one or two family members who you really love and really get on with and have a decent relationship with, if you have even one family member, one direct family member who's a difficult person or who's abusive or unpleasant or, or absent or whatever, like it's, it's a very hard thing. I mean, even if someone's dad leaves or something, you know, like that can really screw people up. The, the rejection and the abandonment and, um, just the lack of that presence in your life, it can really like, you know, really screw people up. So to be so badly treated that you were taken away and put into presumably a very cold environment of the care system and, and cold is probably the best case scenario. I mean, some of the stories you hear from people in care are just, are just, uh, horrible beyond belief and and I, I i i think it's important not to tar the whole care system with the same brush because yeah there's a lot of horror stories and a lot of it seems to be a lot of rumors and hints that people like savile and these kinds of people kind of target those environments and other and people who um systematically abuse kids kind of use either the care system itself or just the kids from the care system, kids who don't have anyone to tell, kids who don't have any, you know, they don't have a a, a, a big brother or a dad or whatever to say that you did something or whatever, you know, it's, it seems to be that um, being in care and abuse go hand in hand. But I'm sure there are some people who have been in care who felt very loved and had good environments and stuff uh, around them. And have had people who've really tried to do a good job and tried to help them. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it sounds like a, a very bad environment. And to go through all of that as a kid and to have no one, no family, no connection to anything. And then to become an adult, that seems in a way almost like the worst part because you can get through this like torturous confusing lonely childhood and then it's like there you go you're free go off into the world like you don't even have the the system around you you know there's not even people who are there's 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 nothing um and i, I and i remember thinking that about his life like when he was just he was just going to move to another town with his mate and he was going to move there he's not going to know anyone he's not going to have any family he's not going to have anyone to call you know when when he goes to bed at night he's not gonna you know he's just gonna it's like pure loneliness really because it's clearly the friendships he had were subject to change and were tumultuous and they weren't super close i don't think there was anyone well i know really for a fact there wasn't anyone who was like his best friend you know someone who you know some people are lucky enough to have friends that are like family he he clearly didn't have that. He didn't have a, even a friend who was close enough to be like family. So imagine in your life, you don't even have that. You don't even have that as a minimum. You don't even have a friend who's so close that they're like a brother to you or anything. You don't even have a friend that's that close that you can even trust. So you don't even have a person in your life that you can trust. So when something goes wrong, there's no one you can call and say, this fucked up thing happened to me today. You know, please don't tell anyone, but I want to talk to someone about it or someone who can who you can confide in or who can, you know, you know, put an arm around your shoulder or whatever when when things are happening. The world would be a very cold and unfriendly place. And uh, it's not it's not hard to imagine how someone in that situation would become very dysfunctional. And in fact, it's hard. It, it's hard for me to understand how functional and friendly he was on a day-to-day -day basis to be honest because there's people who go through stuff like that and they're out in the street you know like screaming at people and stuff and you know like dressed in rags uh so it, you know the fact that he was you know relatively together and enjoyable to be around is is uh it's kind of something in a way um to me but but uh yeah i don't know I don't know. I don't, you know, it was all kind of, it was a bit of a mystery. Um, a lot of it because yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot we didn't know about him and, and he kind of just came into our life and then, and then, uh, disappeared, you know? Um, but there was also a feel. you know, he seemed like someone who was, um, uh, you know, he would, 
he wanted to help or do you know he would he would have your back if something went wrong for example you know and like he would uh, really it was probably more like he would have your back if like someone did something to you you know but he was uh, he cared about people you know he wasn't he wasn't um, you know he cared about people and he and, and he had he had uh, he had um, he wasn't an entirely bad person uh so yeah, it was a weird situation. It was a strange thing to be exposed to. Um and and uh yeah, it goes to show, you know, because you might meet someone like that and not and just think it's just a normal person and then they might behave in a certain way and you think, oh, this person's a dick or that or whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, his experience is excuse his behaviour. I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that as an idea. I don't, I just don't think that's like a practical way to look at things. Um, to look at it as one or the other. I, I don't really look at things in that way is what I mean to say in terms of like, I, I don't know, this point is, it's, it's too much to get into now, but but um, it's just uh, it's just you just you just wouldn't know a lot of people you know you hang out with like or meet you just wouldn't know you don't you don't know what they've been through um, and there are some experiences people have in life that are that are uh, difficult or lonely or confusing or traumatizing to a point that like um, most of us are lucky to not to not be able to imagine or understand. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that was, that was him. As I say, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've had, I've had actually, uh, probably I can think of one or two friendships I've had that have been even stranger than that, but there's some of them, there's one in particular I, I can't really talk about. Um, I would like to, but, but, uh some very odd stuff happened. I wouldn't say a similar situation, but, um, but kind of, uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, so that's all. Yeah, so I'm a bit tired and like um, not super clear telling the story. I'm a bit. I'm just a bit tired this morning. I've been doing a lot of um, uh, microdosing recently. I'm going to do a video about that soon. It's been really good. That's not why I'm tired. I haven't done it today. I haven't microdosed today. Um, but yeah, yeah, good. All right. Well, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope he's. I hope Mikey has uh, things are better for him I guess <laughs> hope he's landed on his feet in some way you never know you know some people they meet someone it changes their life or they get a certain, maybe join the army and that would have been maybe important um, I feel like there was uh, I feel like he had potential as a human being I don't think you know uh, I don't know yeah anyway alright guys thanks for watching um, and uh, yeah take care